Good morning, everyone. How are you today? I am here for the NWT Literacy Council Live Facebook event, and my name is Karen Johnson. I am the Community Connections Coordinator, so I offer programs to new immigrants to Yellowknife, and today happens to be the start of Ramadan, so if you know anybody who is Muslim, be sure to greet them and you can say either Ramadan Karim, that's Ramadan Karim, or Ramadan Mubarak to wish them a happy, a happy blessed Ramadan. So that means for the next month, these individuals are going to be fasting from dawn until dusk and then they break their fast in the evening. A lot of people in Yellowknife will follow the Edmonton schedule. Um, so yeah, Ramadan Kareem everyone. But today we are going to make granola. This is my favorite breakfast cereal. I have been making granola for over 20 years, not always using the same recipe, but I bet you I've used this recipe probably for at least 15 years. And so my hands are washed and we're ready to go. Step number one is getting our oats. Oh, by the way, if you look at the NWT Literacy Council events and find the Facebook Live for this one, you will be able to find the ingredients list and the recipe in there. So our first ingredient is large flake oats or old fashioned oats, they're sometimes called. We're gonna put six cups of oats into this pan. Three, four, five, six. That's six cups of large flaked oats. Now the next thing on my ingredient list is one and a half cups of seeds. And it's totally up to you what kind of seeds you like. I have pepita seeds, the pumpkin seeds. So I'm gonna put in a half cup of those. I don't always use sesame seeds because I find the little seeds get stuck in my teeth sometimes, but here's our half cup of sesame seeds. And I think these are my favorite. These are sunflower seeds. You might not be able to get such a selection of seeds where you live. If you don't, it's not a big deal. Just pick and choose, or maybe you don't like one particular kind of seed or you're allergic, so no, just skip it and add something else. So there's our seeds, one and a half cups. We have cashews today. These ones are already broken up, which is handy. So I've got a half cup of cashews. Sorry for the rattling bags. I choose to use whole almonds with the skins on still. So we have half a cup of almonds. And my favorite, because they're nice and tasty, is pecans. They're also really easy to cut. So that makes life use handy. And I'm just going to chop these. Doesn't matter how much you cut them. It's totally up to you if you like big chunks, small chunks. The beauty of granola is you can adapt the recipe any way you wish. So we're 
almost done chopping these. I don't have children in the house, but you can hear my dog Leroy. He sees somebody outside and he's telling me that there's danger. In my family, we have a belief that anybody can cook as long as you can read a recipe. And I think the same goes for baking. Sometimes we need a little help to understand the terminology, I guess. But this particular recipe, I hope you will find relatively easy to make. The almonds, because they're so hard, I find sometimes jump off the counter. So that's my, that's why I cut the almonds and the pecans at the same time, because it seems that the pecans kind of keep the almonds where they belong. Okay, I would say we're good to go. There's my nuts all chopped. So I'm tossing them on top of everything else. And we also are going to put some coconut in. You can use whatever uh, fine or medium or large flake coconut, whatever you can find that's available. My preference is just as long as it's unsweetened. That's the main thing for me. So here's my cup of coconut. And I've got my pan here. I'm just going to give everything a stir to mix it up. And the oven temperature, while I've been cutting my nuts and putting this mix together. I had the oven preheating, so I start at 425 while I'm doing the roasting, and that will give it a nice golden brown texture or golden brown color, but we do want to make sure that I, that I stir it because otherwise the top layer is gonna be dark and the bottom will be very light colored. So I'm just gonna throw this in the oven Magically, I already have some in there, so I'm stirring this batch. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take two secs. I'm sorry, but I do have to let the dog out. Here we are, I'm back. So while my granola is roasting, another thing that I can do is to get the sweet mixture ready to go for it. And I have, well, like today I'm gonna use honey and maple syrup, two of my favorite sweeteners. For the honey, I guess I, partly because it often I need to melt it, so that's why I like to use a bit of a mix. And you can just bung it in to your measuring cup. We're looking for a cup of sweet. A long time ago I used to order agave syrup. Um, agave I think comes from a particular kind of cactus and it's meant to be quite a good sweetener for our 
well not for our health necessarily but anyway um but i haven't been purchasing that one for a while so honey and maple syrup are my standards and then i was actually thinking what would it be like if i put birch syrup in to my granola i don't know how much flavor or how much difference it would give me in the flavor So here's my cup of honey and maple syrup, and I'm going to put that in the microwave to warm up. When it's heated, it just gets a little bit more, it's just easier to pour on, um, which is great. And I see some people are commenting and people are watching from around the Northwest Territories. That's pretty cool. Hello to Jennifer in Norman Wells, I think. I first met Jennifer when I was traveling the territories doing cross-country skiing for the NWT Ski Division. almost there by having the the sweetener warm it just spreads better when I pour it onto my granola as you probably know it's always good to stir anything in the microwave and make sure that it's consistent and in this case because I used honey and maple syrup it's just going to help to blend it and I'm not licking my finger today as much as I would love to So other things that I can do while I'm getting ready, I will add fruit at the end. So I have various kinds of dried fruit that I'm going to use today. And I like to use just regular kitchen scissors. It's actually easier in a way to use the scissors to chop small things in the kitchen than to use a knife. So while I'm waiting for the syrup to warm, I will do a little chop. There we go. Oh, we're still not quite mixed here. our stuff a stir Now you can see that everything's all melted. So we are good to go. So one thing I have to say it now before I forget is once I add on the honey, because this is now, you can see it's quite nicely roasted. So I'm gonna turn my oven down to 375 for the next half of the baking. And so 
So now we'll go 375 for the next 15 minutes. The first roasting is 15 minutes long and I try to stir it every two or three minutes. Can you hear the sizzling from the honey? Ooh, it is hot. So as much as possible, I'm gonna bring the oats from the edge into the middle, making sure that we spread the honey maple syrup mixture equally around. Woo. We're already pretty roasty. Try to get all that off. And now it goes back in the oven. It's always a good idea to set your timer because the last thing you want is to burn your good granola. So we've got all our oats, our nuts, our seeds, our coconut. It's got the syrup added. Now we're just going to get the all the bits ready that I'm going to add on top of it. Sometimes depends on the nature of the fruit that I'm adding, whether I put it in the oven or not. Today, because it's, you know, the pandemic, we haven't been shopping as much as normal. So I actually, my favorite in granola is to have apricots, but sadly today I am all out of apricots. So instead, we're going to make it tropical. I found in my pantry some mangoes that have been sitting there for a while. Remember, dried fruit does have a best before date, but it actually never goes bad. It just gets drier. So these mangoes have probably been in my pantry, in my cupboard for maybe even two or three years. Who knows? So we're going to chop them and I also found some pineapple and I've never put pineapple in my granola before so we'll do that. Whoa, where are we? And it, just like the nuts and the seeds it's well it's kind of how much dried fruit you like so you can do at least a cup and a half, maybe two cups if you like it more fruity. It's kind of to your taste, which is the beauty of a recipe like this. I, I guess when I read a recipe, I kind of use it more as a guideline most of the time, unless it's, I guess, a cake. I will follow the recipe more, very precisely, but if I'm making something for dinner, I may make my own modifications and adjust it based on what ingredients I have available or whatever. So here I have pineapple. And we've already got our mangoes. Now the one thing I am going to put in the oven after my second stirring is some, uh, what am I going to put in? I'm going to put golden raisins in. There we go. And I know some people don't like raisins or maybe some people don't like craisins. Of course, you're not going to make it with something that you don't like. hotter than usual today. All 
all stirred up, ready to go for another three minutes. Mm. Now, what's next? So, actually, a bit more pineapple. So I hope everyone read yesterday. I might have said it already, but if I didn't, remember yesterday was read for 15. Nope, sorry. We made it read for 30 minutes because the NWT Literacy Council this week is celebrating 30 years of literacy and 30 years of our organiza organization in the Northwest Territories. So. If by chance you read for 30 minutes yesterday, please send an email to nwtliteracy at nwtliteracy.ca. Tell us how many people are in your household and, well, how many people read in your household yesterday. And we have initiated it a bit of as a fun challenge between the Yukon Literacy Organization, the NWT Literacy Council, and Nunavut. So be sure to tell us if you read for 30 minutes yesterday. And hopefully it was fun reading and not just reading for work or for school. Although sometimes that reading can be fun. Okay, I think this is ready to go. And uh, we've got one more minute, but maybe we'll just pull it out a little early. So I noticed that my mother is watching. Hello in British Columbia. And my mom always liked golden raisins. I think they were a special thing because the Sultana raisins are the least expensive. I think we just got golden raisins once in a while. So there's about a half a cup of golden raisins and I'm going to stick them in and we'll roast them too. So this is our our last stir. I don't want to put, if I put the fruit in too soon, it just gets, sometimes it gets burnt on the top. So we're just going to Give it a quick time in the oven and at the end I'm going to toss in the mangoes and the pineapples because they're very dry today. So here we go. Now it's time for me to give the public service announcements for the NWT Literacy Council. So bear with me. Maybe if you want you can go and grab a pen and a piece of paper and write it down because we have lots of things this week. It is NWT Literacy Week. We used to do it in September. We decided to move the date to April because sometimes it seems like there's less going on at this time of year. And of course now there's not very much going on at all. So that's why we've started to do stuff online. So number one, read for 30 minutes. That was yesterday. As I said, send us an email or post on Facebook if you did your reading and how many people. The Northern Rights Contest was launched earlier this week in another live video. And for that one, there are various age categories. This is something that we used to do quite a long time ago. And when Nunavut was still part of the Northwest Territories. So it's been a while since we've done this, but we're pretty excited. You have until the 30th of June to write us a story, a poem, anything that you wish. There are many different age categories, including a family category, which is pretty fun. So the parents could write the story, the kids could illustrate. And as I say, the deadline is June 30th. You can find details on the 
events page in the NWT Literacy Council Facebook. Um, tomorrow, Friday at noon, Colleen, another staff person, is going to do vocal warm ups and a sing along with her ukulele. So that's a cool one. Make sure you join in at noon tomorrow. Saturday at 10.30 a.m. is our ever awesome NWT brushing song. Thanks to Stephanie. And Stephanie has offered if you would like a hard copy of the book and you live in Yellowknife, Delo, or Detta, she will drop a book off at your house for you. But again, we need an email just so we know where to go. And her address is Stephanie, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E at nwtliteracy.ca. In the email, send her your name and your street address so that she can drop something off for you. And her live video is going to be at 10.30 a.m. And it should be pretty fun. She's trying to line up a musician to help her out with that one. So be sure to join in. We have an online book club. So again, it's a Facebook event. And you're invited to share a book review of something that you're reading. And we will enter all the individuals who wrote book reviews will be entered into a draw even if you're not in the northwest territories we will make sure that we get a prize out to you so you have to make your entry on facebook uh, nwt literacy week activity challenge is something that was inspired by the cabin radio easter egg hunt i don't know if any of you participated or noticed that one so the NWT Literacy Week Activity Challenge is a listing of 15 different things. We want you to write a poster or a banner that you can put in your window celebrating NWT Literacy Week. Go and take pictures of yourself outside different places like where you can get books in your community or a place where you can get some exercise. Um, so check out that list, NWT Literacy Week Activity Challenge. Again, send in your entries to the NWT Literacy Council and you can enter for a chance to win Yellowknife Bookseller gift certificates if you get all 15 challenges done. So my oven is beeping at me again. And I think... We have some beautiful looking granola, maybe slightly darker than golden brown, but I will take it any way it comes. And I'm just going to toss on my fruit, give it one more stir. I recommend that you just let it cool in the pan but stir it a couple of times as it cools because otherwise it'll get kind of clumpy and lumpy. And when your granola is cool and you're ready to store it, you can grab a jar. That's my usual jar that I keep my granola in, but of course any jar will do. Um, so store it in the jar or a Ziploc plastic bag, something that's airtight. And I'm already ready with my measuring cup. If you've never had granola before, it's hard to know because it's quite dense how much to have. So my cup measure that I use to scoop it out is a quarter of a cup. You could also kind of a quarter a cup to a third of a cup is a single serving of granola. So my standard morning serving, I do two scoops of granola for my breakfast and I like to have it with milk or yogurt. And if I've been organized, I'll make some yummy berry sauce to put on top and mix it all up. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Feel free to send us a comment or ask a question. 
Katie, one of my co-workers, kindly has been online monitoring the questions and comments as, as we've done this. So thank you, Katie. She's given you some feedback, hopefully, if you had a question. And we'll get back to you. But send us an email if you want to know more. nwtliteracy at nwtliteracy.ca and have a great day. Get outside, enjoy the spring weather. Take care.